Okay, we're gonna do this problems one and two. Problem one says, design a circuit whose step response is shown here. Draw the circuit, give all component values, and turn in a multi-sim simulation of your circuit showing that the step response matches the one given here. Uh, so from this step response, we can find two valuable pieces of information. Uh, one is tau, because five tau equals how long it takes for this uh, dampened oscillation to dampen out. So we're going to say it dampens out at two, two milliseconds, which means that tau is going to equal four times 10 to the minus fourth seconds. Second thing we can find out is the frequency. So our frequency, we'll say our frequency f is five kilohertz. This is because uh, the way I figured this out is you have one peak here which matches up with 0.5 and the next peak matches up with 1.5. So these are the two places where a peak perfectly matches up with you know, one of these, one of these dotted lines. So in one second, it oscillates one, two, three, four, five times. Well, in, in one millisecond. So that's five cycles in one millisecond. So we can say it's five kilohertz. And then we can say omega equals two pi f. Which is going to equal 10,000 times pi in radians per second. So we're just going to write that down on the next page right here. So we want to build a circuit with our tau at 4 times 7 to the minus 4th and omega at 10,000 pi. Uh, we're going to build a simple circuit that's easy to work with, simple RLC circuit, with V out right here. Um, so the next thing we want to do is get a characteristic equation for this circuit so we can, we can build it to our specifications. So the first thing we're going to do is use Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to say that the current I flows like that. So I times R is the voltage across the resistor. Voltage across the inductor is LDIDT. We're just going to say LI prime, I prime being derivative of I, plus, uh, and then 1 over C times the integral of IDT is the voltage across the capacitor. Those all add up to zero for Kirchhoff's voltage law. Um, so we're going to take the derivative of everything, uh, d derivative of i. So we have i prime r, l i double prime plus one over c i equals zero. We're going to isolate um, the i double prime term. So we have i double prime plus r over l i prime plus one over L C I equals zero. And this is our characteristic equation. We can just replace the I primes with S's. So that's S squared plus R over L S plus one over L C equals zero. And since we know that S squared plus S two zeta omega naught plus omega naught squared equals zero. Uh, so here we're going to make the assumption that omega naught is approximately equal to the dampened frequency. So this is technically our dampened frequency from our, our, uh, our response. But we're going to say that that's approximately equal to our natural frequency because they're, they're very close. And we'll get the same number. We'll get, the, we'll get a, a reasonable answer either way. So now we can start uh, finding out what circuit elements determine what. So first thing we're going to say is tau equals 1 over zeta omega naught. Uh, we know that omega naught is going to equal 1 over square root of LC because omega naught squared equals 1 over LC. And then this term right here, 2 zeta omega naught equals R over L. Uh, 
Um, so zeta equals r over l times 2 times omega naught. Okay, so we have a number for tau and we have a number for omega naught. Um, so when we look at these, we can see that, well, okay, I'm going to write down what tau is. Tau. So because tau equals 1 over zeta omega naught and omega naught equals 1 over root LC, we can just say tau equals 1 over r over 2 times L times omega naught, which is 1 over root LC, times omega naught, which is 1 over root LC. Um, the root LCs cancel, and we are left with 2 L over R for tau. So our, the important things we need to see right here, so we have a number for omega naught and tau. So this term is important as well as this one. We can see that there's an L in both these terms. So we can just pick an arbitrary inductor value. So we will pick um, L equal to one millihenry, or you know one times 10 to the minus third. From there, uh, if we know what L is going to be, we can solve for C because we know omega naught and we know L. So we can just say that omega naught squared equals 1 over LC or C equals 1 over omega naught squared L, which is equal to 1 over. 10,000 pi squared times 1 times 10 to the minus third. And this equals 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Approximately 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads or 1 microfarad. And now all we have to left for is to solve for r. Um, so we know tau, we know our l, we can solve for r. So our resistor value is going to be equal to 2l over tau. So 2 times 1 times 10 to the minus third over Oh, it's losing. Okay. 4 times 10 to the minus 4th is just going to be equal to 5. So our r is going to equal 5 ohms. So this, these three circle elements in this circuit should give us the step response we're after. So let's build that in multi-sim. Here we have our 5 ohm resistor, 1 millihenry inductor, one microfarad capacitor. Um, this is our V out node right here. Our uh, step voltage goes up one to one volt. Um, so let's simulate it. So we make our output V out simulate. Uh, so let's see if this is what we what we were looking for in the beginning. So here we have, it's going to converge on one volt. Um, frequency of five kilohertz, uh, which is also going to be equal to a period of two milliseconds or point, point 0.2 milliseconds because uh, period equals 1 over frequency. We can use these guys to check our answer. So we have a period, so we'll say from the time between from one peak to another. Our 
our dx is 200 micro microseconds, which is 0.2 milliseconds. That's about correct. Uh, the time it takes to dampen out. So here is our dx up here is about two two milliseconds, which is what we have here. Um, and it converges on one volt. So there you go.